Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Wandering Black Hole. If you keep up with space news, you'll know that lately, and rightfully so, it's been flooded with news of the James Webb Telescope as it unfurls and reaches its destination at L2. But while this is exciting and very promising, we have to take some time to remember our roots. The James Webb was preceded by the infamous Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble walked so James Webb could run. Since its launch into low Earth orbit in the 1990s, this space telescope has been delivering us amazing space discoveries, and this one is a bit of a frightening one. Back in 2017, the Hubble located a black hole, which is already frightening, but this one was peculiar. That is because they found that this one was basically being pulled or manipulated by gravitational waves. Basically what this means is that at some point this black hole is going to escape its own galaxy and begin roaming into the universe. Black holes are bad enough, I don't want them to start wandering around. The good news however is that despite this black hole weighing approximately the same as 1 billion suns, as it flies through space at 5 million miles per hour, it's estimated to be about 8 billion light years away from Earth, so we're pretty safe at this point. In our number 9 spot today we have the Trementina Base. This is a location that was of course discovered using satellite imaging, and you might be wondering what this base holds that makes it so unsettling. Well that is because this is the location that belongs to the Scientology affiliated Church of Spiritual Technology. If you are unfamiliar, Scientology is a set of beliefs and practices that were invented by L. Ron Hubbard, and it has been variously defined as a cult. The core belief of this group is that humans are immortal and that our bodies are a essentially just a shell to house us. There's also some alien stuff in there I'm not quite so sure about. This group is quite controversial, not only for the beliefs of the group, but because of their illegal activities that also occur like fraud or spying on the government. There have been numerous superior court judgments which have not only called this group a dangerous but also a manipulative profit making business as well. So this base is said to belong to the Church of Spiritual Technology and they are said to be an entity that was formed to manage the copyright affairs of the Church of Scientology. This base is supposed to provide storage space for an archiving project which is meant to preserve founder L. Ron Hubbard's writings, films and recordings for future generations which is definitely a terrifying thought. It is said that these texts have been engraved on stage stainless steel tablets that are encased in titanium capsules and held underground. Maybe a little overzealous if you ask me. In our number 8 spot today we have Stereo A. The Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, or STEREO for short, is a solar observation mission that was first launched in 2006. The mission saw the launch of two spacecrafts, STEREO A and B, and they were sent into orbit around the sun. This has caused the spacecraft to pull ahead of and fall behind the Earth, which has given them the opportunity to use their stereoscopic capabilities to get imaging of the sun, as well as phenomena such as coronal mass ejection, which is exactly what we are here to talk about today. In July of 2012, there was a CME, often referred to as a sort of solar superstorm, that tore through Earth's orbit, but luckily, Earth wasn't there. The same couldn't be said, however, for the Stereo A spacecraft as this storm and the craft collided. If this event had occurred just one week prior to when it did, Earth would have been right in the midst of it, however, so we were pretty narrowly missed. The Stereo A spacecraft has been able to remain operational despite this hot encounter. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Lost City. In 2011, archaeologist Sarah Parkak used high resolution and NASA satellites in order to look for subtle differences on the surface of the Earth, and she used this in order to pinpoint the locations of buried ancient pyramids, towns, and ancient tombs in Egypt. This would allow her and her team to find these spots from thousands of miles away so that they could then go and excavate them. While this method led to many amazing discoveries, perhaps the most notable of all is the discovery of a 3,000 year old Egyptian city. She and her team had found the lost ancient city of Tanis, which lies about two hours northeast of Cairo. Through this satellite imaging, she was able to find networks of streets and such that are completely invisible from the ground. The imaging also shows that the city is filled with underground tombs as well. Sir explains why she enjoys what she does so much, saying, quote, What's incredible about archaeology is literally every day archaeologists are making headlines by making the most incredible discoveries. 
Well, Sarah, this is certainly one of them. In our number six spot today, we have whales. There are quite a few satellites that orbit our Earth, and there has been for years, but as time goes on, we find new ways to use the information that they give us. According to an article written on January 20th of this year, there is a new study that is showing how, as satellite imagery improves, it is being used to accurately identify whales that have been stranded on beaches. The article goes on to explain why this is important, saying, quote, For as long as humans have been monitoring the ocean, the only way we've known about stranded whales was to stumble upon them ourselves. But knowing about stranded whales, including where and when they strand and how many are ashore, is vitally important. Largely due to human causes, such as ship strikes, pollution, and entanglement in fishing gear, whale strandings are on the rise. Their occurrence can often signal that something is amiss and hint at a larger ecosystem problem, such as a harmful algal bloom, yet the ground-based networks used to monitor stranded whales are biased towards wealthy, highly populated regions. It is very true that despite their enormous size, many of these creatures that wash up on remote coastlines or in resource-limited nations or in countries experiencing conflict end up going completely unnoticed. In our number 5 spot today, we have the SS Yasim Wreck. The SS Yasim was a Bolivian cargo ship that sank on the evening of December 1st, 2003. For a while, no one was quite sure as to why it sank, as well as the fact that no one could find the wreck. This is exactly why it was so surprising when, a few years ago, the Google Maps team located the sunken vessel based on their satellite imaging. The ship was found on its side, perhaps in the same location it initially sank, in Wingate Reef, just off of the coast of Sudan. This wreck then became one of the largest visible on Google Earth until quite recently. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Lake of Blood. This is another find that came as someone was scrolling along and looking at all there is to see on Google Maps all the way back in 2007. This is when they noticed a blood red lake that sat just outside of Sadr City in Iraq. Many people began to speculate what this could be about, including a ton of macabre ideas. There was even a rumor going around that said a local slaughterhouse in the area would sometimes dump their blood into canals, but this seems a little unnecessary and very unlikely. There hasn't yet been an official explanation for what exactly made the water so red, but it's most likely that the red color is due to sewage, pollution, or possibly some sort of water treatment process. I can understand why the startling image would get people's imaginations going, but it is likely a pretty reasonable explanation. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Gobi Desert Structure. This is one discovery that had conspiracy theorists mind Mine's absolutely swirling. About a decade ago, someone was searching through some Google Maps images when they found a mysterious array of structures and patterns that appeared to be etched into the surface of the Gobi Desert, which is located in China. The structures are reminiscent of geoglyphs, but are seemingly much more modern and newly created. The speculations of what this structure could be or why it was created went wild, with people saying that they were street maps of American cities or messages either to or from some sort of extraterrestrials, the list of bizarre theories just goes on. While this is still sort of conspiracy sounding, this is likely the most reasonable explanation for what these structures are, and that is that these structures are used to help calibrate China's spy and radar satellites. To be fair, this does make a lot of sense, and I don't have any other ideas for what it could possibly be. In our number 2 spot today, we have Leo 1. So, we live on Earth, which is one of the planets in our solar system, and our solar system sits in a galaxy that we call the Milky Way. There are other galaxies out there that are potentially similar to ours, but there are also things called satellite galaxies. So you know how our solar system is a solar system because we are bound to and orbiting around our sun? Well, basically these satellite galaxies are like that, but with bigger galaxies. Like, they orbit around our galaxy. It's a whole thing about gravity and all of that science-y stuff, but in the end, here in the Milky Way, we have about 50 satellite galaxies that orbit us, and the particular one I want to talk about right now is called LEO-1. We started investigating this specific one because of the fact that researchers realized that it doesn't contain a lot of dark matter. While studying this galaxy, it was found that although it is small, it has a massive black hole at the center of it. 
Like, it's so big in comparison to the galaxy itself that this black hole is almost as big as the one we have here in the Milky Way, which is unprecedented data. This discovery could lead scientists to redefining what their understanding is of how all galaxies formed. The galaxies are the building blocks of the universe, so this would be immensely interesting and important information, and it could change a lot of what we once believed. In our number one spot today, we have The Missing Hiker. This one is a little different from the others on today's list, but it's a super interesting story that involves using satellites, and I had to share it with you. A man by the name of Ben Kuo has a hobby where he enjoys looking at different satellite imagery in order to look at all places all over the world. He has said, quote, you can look and see what's going on in the world no matter where it is. It's kind of fascinating what you can see. He then went on to describe how it's kind of trivial, but he loves it, and in this case, it was more useful than trivial. The case he is referring to took place in April of 2021, when a hiker named Rene Compion got lost in the Angeles National Forest. While lost with little reception and low battery on his phone, Rene was able to send one photo to his roommate, which he sent in hopes to give a clue about his location. The photo showed his legs with a sort of canyon below, and while I look at the photo and go, okay, he's somewhere that has rocks, I guess, people like Ben see this as a stellar clue. Ben said, quote, actually, I looked at the picture and I said, I bet I can find where this guy is. Ben used his own knowledge of hiking trails in the area as well as sites like Google Earth and EO Browser in order to zero in on where the missing hiker could be. It took Ben about 20 to 30 minutes to find what he thought was the location of the missing person and he passed along the info to the search and rescue team. In the end, when the sheriff's department went out to investigate, they found the missing man less than a mile from where Ben suggested he might be. Once found and informed of how they located him, Renee said, quote, I was like, wow, I didn't I realized somebody had a hobby doing stuff like that. I owe him my life and everybody else that was involved in helping. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Van Allen Radiation Belt. The Explorer 1 was the first satellite that was launched by the United States, and of course, right off the bat, we were finding some unexpected, slightly unsettling things. Launched on February 1st, 1958, this satellite was the first to discover the Van Allen Radiation Belt. Basically, the radiation belt is a zone of charged, energetic particles, most of which originate from solar wind. These particles are captured and then held around a planet's magnetosphere. So while other planets can and do have these belts, Earth has two main ones, but sometimes others are created temporarily. Basically, these belts help to protect our atmosphere from destruction, so we like the belts. But when discoveries like this one happens, it reminds us of how dangerous space can really be. So NASA launched some space probes that were meant to specifically check out the belts, and in 2013, it was reported that the Van Allen probes had discovered a transient third radiation belt. This third belt was observed for just four weeks until it ended up being obliterated by a powerful interplanetary shockwave from the sun. How terrifying is that? Left just as quickly as it came. Thankfully, our main two are still intact, and that really is all we can hope for. In our number nine spot today, we have TESS. New data from NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite is showing that it has been able to discover 5,000 objects of interest. The list of objects has been growing since 2018, and in the last year alone, it has increased by 1,600. Here's the thing about this list of objects of interest, though. They're of interest because they are thought that they might possibly harbor some kind of alien life. Whether it's the smallest, most primitive forms or something more, it's all exceptionally interesting and the list is growing faster and faster every year, which is a testament to the great work being done by the teams responsible for the mission. As of right now, the next step in the test mission will be taking place in 2025, which will hopefully reveal more candidates for planets. In our number eight spot today, we have Ahuna Mons. In 2015, during the time of NASA's Dawn mission, this little orbiter made a startling discovery near the equator of a dwarf planet called Cirrus. This discovery came in the shape of a volcano sort of mountain that was later revealed by NASA to be a cryovolcano that, when active, releases frigid, salty water sometimes mixed with mud in place of the molten lava that we see on an Earth-style volcano. In the photos of the volcano, you can see these super interesting bright streaks that run down the sides, which experts say are salt deposits that are left over from the formation of it. It is said that basically plumes of salt water and mud rose up and erupted from the planet, which punctured the surface and created the mountain we can see now. Perhaps not the scariest thing on this list, but seeing how differently other worlds formed to ours always leaves me with so many questions. In our number seven spot today, we have Mount St. Helens. 
Helens. Over 40 years have passed since the huge, devastating eruption of Mount St. Helens that truly changed the landscape of the Pacific Northwest for hundreds of miles. While this may not have been the most huge and devastating blast ever in the history of the Earth, the thing that sets this one apart is the technology we have available to us now. Since the eruption, experts and researchers have been able to obtain the satellite imagery from the days around the eruption, which occurred on May 18, 1980. This imagery came from the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite 3, and this was very, very useful because rather than a land satellite, which follows a predetermined ground track in order to collect imagery from the entire planet, this satellite provides a constant view of the same area, which is normally great for monitoring weather, but this time it just allowed us to see one of the worst eruptions in US history unfold. In our number six spot today, we have the Tonga eruption. Speaking of volcanic eruptions, there are some incredibly terrifying images that were captured of the Tonga volcanic eruption that occurred just recently. This powerful underwater volcano eruption unleashed a force that was equivalent to 4 to 18 megatons of TNT. It blanketed the island nation of Tonga in ash, it sent tsunami waves across the world, and it even sent ripples through Earth's ionosphere, the outer layer of the atmosphere. The same sort of satellite used to capture the imagery of Mount St. Helens, the one that examines the same area, also were able to capture the Tonga eruption, and it truly shows you just how powerful the blast really is. You can see very clearly the umbrella cloud, you can see shock waves and even lightning strikes. These images are a terrifying reminder of just how devastating these blasts can be, while there is little to nothing that we can do to stop it. In our number five spot today, we have Tilly the Turtle. Apparently, this is now just a list of volcano related satellite imagery, but I swear this one was so interesting, I had to share it with you. So, it is again related to the Tonga volcano, but it involves a little turtle named Tilly. So, Tilly was rescued a few years ago after being stuck in a net with no hope of survival, and she was brought to a special rehabilitation center to help her recover. In November of 2020, Tilly was ready to be released back into her proper home, so she was tagged with a special transmitter and released at Flynn Reef, just off the coast of Cairns. Once released, Tilly began her journey east towards the Pacific Islands, and since she had that little tracker on her, her journey could be watched. This is where the satellite imagery comes in. The citizens of the Great Barrier Reef tracking map shows that Sweet Tilly traveled 1,867 kilometers over 47 days, but then, just two days before the Tonga eruption, seemingly out of nowhere, she made a huge U-turn and started heading back towards the Queensland coast. Tilly knew something was about to happen. Jenny Gilbert from the rehabilitation center where Tilly recovered said, quote, she was obviously feeling something. There must have been vibrations, and she has turned around and started heading back towards Queensland. You hear about these stories, particularly with tsunamis, where animals try to start getting themselves out of the danger zone. I've never seen it happen before, and I think it's just incredible. This might be more fascinating than unsettling, but it just reminds us of how brilliant the animals we share the earth with really are, and while we are rightfully concerned about the humans who were affected by this eruption, it also must have been pretty terrifying for the animals in the area as well. All around, just a horrible situation. In our number four spot today, we have GSN 06. I think we can all agree that getting close to a black hole would be an exceptionally terrifying experience for anyone, especially considering a brush with one is likely to mark the end of an object's journey, but that isn't always the case. In the galaxy that we refer to as GSN 069, there is a star that is currently orbiting a black hole and managing to survive while undergoing some pretty extreme changes. According to astronomers, this star was first a red giant when it began to approach the black hole, but as it first swept past the huge siphoning black hole ate up all of the star's outer hydrogen layers, which eventually left it as a white dwarf. Now this white dwarf has become trapped in a sort of oblong orbit around the black hole because while it's close, it's just out of reach enough that it hasn't fallen in yet. The star is at a distance of about 15 times the radius of the event horizon of the black hole, and each lap around takes about 9 hours. Another unusual thing about this orbit is due to the gravity of the black hole, which is of course going 
to have a major influence. Each time the star orbits, it's being flung in a slightly different direction, which means that its orbit rotates over time and it ends up resembling a sort of rosette. In our number three spot today, we have Kepler 78b. Kepler 78b is an exoplanet that finds its cozy home orbiting around the star called Kepler 78. Its first discovery came in 2013 by the Kepler Space Telescope, and upon discovery, it was thought that this exoplanet was the most similar to Earth because of its mass, radius, and mean density. It's a terrestrial planet, it likely has an iron core. What more could we look for in a planet? Well, we could definitely look for one that isn't hellishly hot like this one. This exoplanet orbits around its parent star once every eight and a half hours and is super close to it. Like I'm talking 40 times closer to its star than Mercury is to our sun. That's way too close. Kepler 78b likes to feature a temperature of around 2030 to 2830 degrees Celsius, which would likely be a little uncomfortable. The temperature is high enough that it has stripped the planet of any stable atmosphere, and it is said that instead of being an Earth-like planet, Kepler 78b is more like a lava planet. To put an even more interesting twist on this wild, hot exoplanet, according to the astronomer Dimitar Sasilov from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, quote, this lava world is an abomination. There's no physical way a small world, only 12% larger than Earth, could have evolved in that location and there's no known mechanism that could have transported it there. But one thing that is certain, it can't stay roasting in that hellish orbit for long. It's destined to get swallowed by its star very soon. Right now, it is estimated that Kepler 78b is going to be swallowed by a star in about 3 billion years, which is just another reason we can cross it off our list for Earth 2.0. In our number two spot today, we have ESO 593IG008. This is a discovery that first came with the Hubble Space Telescope and it showed us one thing, but when re-examined later with the ESO's very large telescope, it showed us more details. With the Hubble images, ESO 593IG008 was previously known as a pair of interacting galaxies at a distance of 650 million light years. One is a spiral galaxy, while the other is more irregular, and while this is already supremely interesting, the VLT images revealed quite the surprise. This surprise came in the way of a third, clearly separate, massive galaxy that seems to be forming stars as frantically as possible. Some areas of these colliding galaxies are moving faster than 400 kilometers a second, and it's said that seeing three galaxies of this size merging is something that is quite rare. While it is very unsettling to think of a three galaxy collision, the imagery from it is absolutely stunning. In our number one spot today, we have the Supervoid. This is a discovery that was first seen by NASA's WMAP satellite in 2004, and it was later confirmed in 2013 by the ESA's Planck mission. Basically, there's a cold spot in the universe which could be seen clearly in the radiation left from the Big Bang, and we aren't quite sure what it is or what it means. Throughout the years, every time we've attempted to remap the cosmic microwave background with more resolution and better technology than we previously had, one of the mysteries that always remains is the cold spot, and it gets more peculiar every time. Quite recently, a new theory that could possibly explain the cold spot was put forward, and at the moment, it seems like it's a theory that most people are agreeing with. Basically, it has to do with a supervoid. The cosmic web is made up of clusters and superclusters of galaxies, and they are pulled to each other by gravity, of course, and sometimes they are accelerated away from each other by the mysterious, not quite understood force that is dark energy. Between these clusters of galaxies are what are called voids, the areas that contain fewer galaxies, which in turn means they contain less matter. So basically, there's a supervoid, one of the largest known to humanity, and it's located within the constellation of Eridanus. It's a massive, elongated, cigar-shaped void that's just a cool 1.8 billion light years wide, and it's said that it contains 30% less matter than the surrounding galactic regions. It is thought that perhaps this huge super void might be responsible for the cold spot, but at this point, there are still tons of questions that are just waiting to be answered. Mm -hmm.